In this video, we're going to talk about some of the fun or maybe unknown features of the RTM 3000. And one of the first ones for me is um, that we actually put the information in the Graticule for what the time base is, um, what the uh, voltage is. And so this makes it so much easier. You don't have to know what your volt per division is and then actually go through and count um, the individual divisions to know exactly where you are. And we update this. So if I change the scale, you'll notice that the scale actually changes and updates and um, that makes it pretty simple. Another big thing for me is annotation. Um, annotation is something, particularly when it comes to documentation, that um, makes it much, much easier. So if you want, you can come in here and say, oh, you know, we're seeing something right here. And then you can save that screenshot off, send it to somebody else. You can put text in there. Um, I don't know if you saw, but you can actually go in and see what the individual information is um, in the annotation uh, piece itself. So different colors, you can delete things, um, we can clear the entire display, um, we can come in and uh, put in text, those types of things. Another big one for me is I really like the pullout menus and um, in particular I often am changing between different acquisition modes and so um, what you can do is you can open the menu and then when you grab it you can kind of drag it out and you'll see those little arrows and then it'll pop it out here and you don't have to go back into that menu again to change it now so I can go in and say nope I want to go to high res mode and you can bounce back and forth between sample mode and high res or averaging that type of thing another pretty common change is if you want to control the memory depth so instead of having it controlled automatically we can pull that out and we could come in and say you know I want to set my memory depth to 500 kilo samples or kilo points and um, you can do all that automatic um, automatically without having to go into the actual menus themselves um, I think that's a pretty cool capability if you want to get rid of it click on it and say delete or delete all I'll go ahead and delete all of them Another big one for me is you can actually go in and you can change the um, color of the channels themselves. So if I go into the channel one menu um, and we'll scroll down, you'll see that there's this waveform color. And so the default color is going to default to um, a uh, yellow for channel one and, you know, uh, a purplish color for channel four, those types of things. But you may want to turn on something like a temperature display to it. And so here I've turned on the temperature display and you can adjust the uh, brightness on this by using the brightness control and so I can right now it's roughly at about 100% that's why you see everything is white but if I dial it down it starts to put signals that happen less often into different color buckets and so you can see that we've got a red theme around um, there and I can continue to dial it down um, and this makes it really easy to spot kind of outlier signals signals that don't happen very often and also spot signals that do happen very regularly. Another big one for me is the undo button. And so if you ever do something that you didn't mean to, um, if you accidentally, let's say, zoom in on the wrong part of the waveform or whatever it might be, if you come in and you hit this undo button, it'll actually take you back to the previous setup um, to where you were before you did that last action. And I think that's really helpful, particularly as you're learning the scope or if you accidentally do something and it completely changes the way that the waveform is viewed, know that you have that undo button to step yourself back. And I think that makes it um, uh, pretty easy to be able to play around with the scope and know that you've got a safety net there if you need it. 